Okay, so now that you have done exercise two, let's uh, check your answer. Uh, so let's see, it's given that y is inversely proportional to the square of x. So the square of x, not to be confused with the square root of x, the square of x just means x squared. So if we're saying y is inversely proportional to that, that means y equals k over the square of x. Uh, and, but we don't have a formula for y just in terms of x yet. Now it's in terms of k and x. So we've got to uh, take the values, 0 0.25 for y and 5 for x and plug those in. and solve this equation to figure out what k will be. So let's see. Um, so 5 squared is just 25. So what we have is 0 0.25 equals k over 25. And you could just multiply both sides by 25. and to cancel that out and that's going to give you k equals uh i need a calculator for this one i think we're going to get 6.25 okay so k is 6.25. That means a formula, you can plug that in for k now, the formula is just going to be y equals 6.25 over x squared. Um, and now if x increases, does y increase or decrease? Well, you could always make a table uh, or just plug in some numbers in your calculator, but you could also just uh, analyze it, which is probably a good exercise, just looking at this. Let's figure it out. Um, if, if you plug in bigger numbers for x, then x squared is going to get bigger. And that means the denominator of this fraction is getting bigger. And just like we said with uh, example 2, if the denominator of a fraction gets bigger, the, the result of dividing is going to get smaller. Uh, so this is going to make y decrease. Okay, so now let's look at example four. So if you, this one you might be able to do it on your own, and I should repeat this advice in general, that if you can do the examples on your own, that's better than watching somebody else do it. So it's good to try it. And if, if you wanna do that right now, you can, you can pause the video and try it on your own and then skip ahead to see the answer. Uh, so you can just check it that way instead of having to watch my whole explanation. Uh, so, so let's see, let's find K first and see is p positive or negative oh and by the way there's a typo here uh or a mistake maybe it was a math mistake i don't know this three should be a four uh so cross out that three here and make it a four and then the problem will make sense uh if that if you leave it as a three then it's actually impossible to make y equal to k times x to the power p all right so what we can do is to find k just like before you could plug in values of x and or, or sorry, x and y that we have from the table. Uh, so I'm going to look at the first one. Um, I'm going to take 4 for y, and that's got to be equal to k times x, which is 1 here, to the power p. Uh, and this is actually a good way to do it. We could have also done it with other points. We could say, uh, what if x was 4, or wait, sorry, I'm looking at 1. If x, I'm confused. Uh, okay, pretend I didn't just say anything. If 
x is 2 and y is 1. That's going to give you 1 equals k times 2 to the power p. This equation is hard to solve because you have two variables, k and p, in it. Um, so this one would lead to confusion. Uh, however, this one is act the, the first one I did is the easier way to do it because 1 to the power p is just 1. It means 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 p times. It doesn't matter what p is. It's just 1. So it really only has one variable, k, that matters. Uh, and really, it's the, k times 1 is also just k. So this tells you that k is equal to 4. So that's the first question there. Uh, k is equal to 4. Um, and now this should be a question mark here instead of a period. That's another little mistake. Uh, so let's see. Let's answer the question, is P positive or negative? Uh, well, uh, let's look at some of the examples we had before. Like with exercise 2, here, this wasn't written as k times x to the p, but you could write it like y equals 6.25 times x to the negative 2. That means like the x squared is in the denominator of a fraction. That's what a negative exponent means. Uh, and in that case, when it was negative, uh, if p is negative 2, uh, that makes y decrease here. So what about over here? When p is positive, like here we have p is 3, it makes y increase. Here, when we have y equals 6 over x, you could write that as y equals 6x to the negative 1, and that makes y decrease. So if y is decreasing, you can see that happens when the, the x to a positive power is in the denominator, or if it's x to a negative power, which means the same thing as that. So in this case, uh, let's see, here y is decreasing, uh, so that means that uh, K, uh, P is negative. That this must mean like X is to a power and basically the denominator of a fraction. Uh, and if you want a moment now to do this optional exercise, a little challenge, try to find P. Uh, I'm going to whistle for a moment and then tell you the answer. And this is what I get. P is negative 2. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, example 5 for the last part of this video. Um, this is, uh, I think, a useful thing to, to know um, because it kind of affects how a lot of things work in real life. Um, the areas of square are everywhere in the real world, whether you're like painting a house and you are uh, you need to get the square footage of the area you need to paint uh, or all kinds of other things. So let's say you have uh, a square. I'm going to draw a square here. Uh, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so this is the original square. Uh, let's say that the side length has side x. Then if we triple the side, meaning like I'm going to take it and stretch it out to make another square that is 
three times bigger. So the area is the length times width, x times x is x squared. So if we triple its side, now instead of it being uh, x on each side, it's going to be 3x. So that's going to be like x. And this is now the side length is now going to be 3x. But that's not the whole square. That's just part of it. Because uh, the other side is also 3x now. I'm going to try to draw that in here. So this length is also 3x. Try to get them to line up, sort of. Okay, so now it's 3x by 3x. And what is the new area? Is it three times as much area as we had before? Well, we had x squared here, 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 another x squared, and another x squared. Uh, the new area is 9x squared. So what happened to the area? It got multiplied by 9. Another way to see this is, like, let's just take the formula for area. The area of a rectangle is going to be whatever the side length is squared. But what if we now say it's 3x, and you square that? Well, 3x squared, you can use the exponent rule to write this as 3 squared times x squared, which is, of course, 9 times x squared. So that's another way to get that same result. Uh, now, this is true in a lot of things in the world that, like, if you uh, make something bigger, in one dimension, like like the length of the side is three times longer, uh, another way of measuring that thing, like the area on the inside might not be uh, three, it, it might not be three times as big, it might be nine times as big. And this actually has a lot of implications in the real world for sort of the way bigger or small things work. I'm not going to get into all of the details, but you'll notice that, for example, small animals are shaped differently than large animals. Um, like if you take an elephant and you look at a cross section of an elephant's leg, it has a huge thick uh, leg bone in the middle um, that takes up a larger fraction of its leg uh, than like a human or a smaller animal does. Um, and another example, if you look at a small animal, like insects can have uh, can have uh, exoskeletons, but why is there no animal with an exoskeleton that's as large as a human or as large as an elephant? Um, maybe it's just because they were scary and the cavemen killed them all, those giant insects, but that's not really why. The reason why is that um, the surface area of the animal and the volume inside the animal sort of scale up differently. And it turns out an exoskeleton would not be able to support the weight of a human uh, without being like ridiculously thick. Uh, bones on the inside end up working larger and, and end up working better for, for that, for, for larger animals. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, I recommend looking on YouTube for why are there no giant insects? And I think you'll find some pretty good explanations. Uh, but I'm not going to go into the details here. So uh, anyways, up next you have some exercises. So do those and uh, I'll show you the answers so you can check them or get unstuck in the next video. See you then.